Today's topic, I'm going to discuss cashing out your 401k, uh, whether or not that might be a good decision. Uh, if you do decide to cash out your 401k, whether it makes sense to do it in the form of a withdrawal, whether it makes sense to do it in the form of a rollover so you could place into IRAs and then segment into different customized IRAs that could accomplish your retirement goal. So there's going to be a couple different things I'll cover. Um, more importantly, just make sure that you're avoiding the mistakes. I have a whole section talking about the problems when individuals do this the wrong way and different hiccups that might come along the way. So uh, this could be advantageous for a position or it could be a complete nightmare. It really just depends upon you know, what you're trying to do and making sure that you're staying focused and everything's customized correctly. So first and foremost, what is the difference between a withdrawal versus a rollover? Be mindful how a 401k works. Think of this like a bucket. You're placing monies into your 401k account, which is an employer-sponsored retirement plan. The way on how this account grows is by the contributions the employee is making, what you're making. Um, that you're placing into this plan. And then also potentially if the employer is giving you a match. So that could be an, an additional, I think of it conceptually like a, uh, like another contribution that's being placed in there. So as an example, somebody makes $100,000 in a given year. They put 5% of their salary into their 401k account. Well, then they're contributing $5,000 into this plan. If let's say there was a 3% match, well, then there would be $3,000 coming from the employer. So ultimately for that year, this individual would have $8,000 going into the plan. That's one side of the coin. It's the contribution side. The other side is the rate of return. And this is typically overlooked. So what happens is individual chooses their different types of investments. It might be anywhere between 15 to 25 different options based on that employer plan, employer sponsored 401k plan. And you might say, okay, I want to, this money to grow based on how the market performs or a more of a conservative approach, possibly like a stable value fund where you're just getting a fixed rate of return. Uh, so, you know, really the combination between the contribution somebody's making into the plan and the rate of return that comes back is going to determine whether or not this bucket is going to be larger at the end of the day, end of the year, or it's going to be smaller at the, at the end of the day, end of the year. So that's, you know, really quick synopsis breaks down what a 401k plan is. Now, what happens when somebody wants to cash out their 401k plan? And typically an individual will cash out of this based on different qualifications. So they have to qualify for this opportunity. One of the first qualifications may be if somebody hits a specific age. So it's known as an age-based in-service withdrawal or in-service rollover. So what, what that means is let's say somebody's working for a company at age 30 and all of a sudden they're currently age 60, but they want to retire around age 65 or they want to retire shortly, but they've already hit age 59 and a half. There may be a way that an individual could take their 401k or portion of their 401k and take a withdrawal from that or take a rollover from it as they're still working. So as an example, to keep everything very simple, let's just say that somebody had a had $100,000 in their 401k account. They're still working for their company, but they're qualified because they had an age-based in-service withdrawal. That, that was basically the qualification in order to take monies out of it. If they took it in the form of a withdrawal and they took this full 100000 and dumped it into their checking account, typically what happens is you have a 20% mandatory withholding that has to stay back. What that means is out of the money that you're trying to collect, $80,000 is going to come to you because the company is going to withhold 20% because you're doing it in the form of a withdrawal. Also, these monies that you're taking, this is going to increase the amount of adjusted gross income that you receive at the end of the year. So let's say someone's making $200,000 and they take out $100,000 from their retirement account, then it's going to be equivalent to them making $300,000. The $100,000 is going to show as if they, they earn that as income for the year. So a withdrawal may be necessary in an individual situation, but you have to be careful because every time you're pulling out a withdrawal, that could increase the amount of adjusted gross income at the end of that year, it could push you into a higher tax bracket and have you pay even more taxes. But be mindful that the dollars, when someone takes a full withdrawal, meaning taking from their 401k account, placing into their checking their savings account, what they're doing is they're taking it from a qualified account, putting it into a non-qualified account. So that's where Uncle Sam is going to say, okay, now we have to tax this money. So it's not as simple as just, oh, give me my money. You know, these dollars were sitting there. Everything's great. It's rainbows and butterflies. You're taking money out of it. You're going to have to pay taxes on it. So that's the most important, you know, uh, kind of component to understand with how a withdrawal works. Sometimes it might be necessary if an individual has some sort of, you know, emergency related expense or they want to start collecting some monies to, you know, leverage it for a trip or put a down payment on a home, whatever that the, the case is. There are ways, there are reasons to take out that withdrawal, but typically what's a better mathematical route is, or where somebody could customize their options better is by taking it in the form of a rollover. 
So whenever they hit that qualification, maybe that age-based in-service withdrawal, they could go and rather than dump it into their checking their savings account, if they took it from their qualified 401k account and they roll it over to their qualified traditional IRA account, they're not going to have to pay tax when they're doing that rollover. It's keeping it from qualified to qualified. Once it's in the IRA chassis, now they could customize this into a whole multitude of different ways. So as an example, somebody's age 60, but they're not going to want to retire until age 65. Well, there's different ways on how somebody could, and let's just say there's $500,000 sitting in their, their, IRA, their 401k account. They could go roll that over to an IRA and then splice this into multiple IRAs. Maybe $100,000 be set up for a growth strategy, something that could give them higher quality at lower cost than the different investment choices with their 401k. Maybe 200000 could be set up as an income-related strategy. Maybe another 100000 could be set up as an emergency-related need that they could t- touch the monies whenever they need it in case of a, oh my gosh, moment was to occur. And then the last 100000 maybe they set that up on a type of fixed strategy for just safe accumulation. So basically, they're taking one account that's just ultimately sitting in a basket of 15 to 25 different funds to choose is only really projected on a growth strategy. And now they can customize these options because they took it in the form of a rollover and they customize those into different IRA accounts that are now working together to accomplish that individual's goals. Another type of qualification could be if somebody just stops working for that company. So if they were either terminated or they just, you know, uh, picked up and they, they went over their new employee for a new employer, uh, that would mean that their 401k is essentially sitting on the sidelines. It's sitting with that old employer. So they'll be eligible to take a withdrawal from it. Now be careful because let's say if somebody's in their 40s, they have an old 401k account that's sitting there and maybe it's sitting at $100,000 and they go and say, okay, well, it's just sitting there. Let me just pull my money out. Well, they have certain rules. There's certain age-based rules that if you try to pull out those dollars, if you try to take out withdrawals, you're not going to only be fully taxed on those monies, fully taxable, but then on top of it, you could incur a 10% penalty because you did not wait till age 55 or did not wait until age 59 and a half to take out those withdrawals or take out those monies and place it into a non-qualified account. So there's certain things that you have to tiptoe around to make sure that you're not shooting yourself in the foot and getting penalized and also paying a large amount in taxes and potentially jolting yourself into the next tax bracket uh, if you're taking out too much money in a, in a year where you made a lot of money already, you know, through through your, your current employment. So there's a couple of different factors with that. But yes, from a qualification standpoint, it could be the fact that somebody, you know, is no longer working at a company that could qualify them for cashing their money out. It could be that they had an age-based in-service, um, uh, you know, mechanism where they're hitting age you know, 59 and a half as an example. Some 401k accounts allow you to take out withdrawals or do rollovers on that. And then uh, really a, a third option may be that there is an employer plan change. So like as an example, you know, you had Fidelity was the one that the, the custodian that held your 401k account and then they changed it over to Vanguard. And now Vanguard's the one that that's, uh, you know, that, that's basically housing the 401k account. And they may give you like a 30 day or a 60 day window to say, okay, because we're making this change, you could actually cash out of your 401k or you could roll over your 401k, you know, out of this plan as part of a qualification, regardless of whatever your age is. And you could still be working for the company. So there's a couple of little neat mechanisms to leverage that. Typically what we see is when somebody's able to have the opportunity to cash those monies out, it's not meaning cash it out in the form of withdrawal, but take advantage of the rollover opportunity and customize it into separate IRAs so that it could it could get you to your retirement trajectory much easier than just staying in that 401k account. Another portion on you know what is cashing out your 401k is you could also do a conversion into a Roth IRA. If you're eligible to cash out your 401k, basically this 401k are pre-tax qualified monies. If you go and you do a conversion into a Roth IRA, that would convert those monies into tax-free monies, tax-free growth and tax-free income. But there's certain taxation, there's certain things that you have to be careful of. The benefits of a Roth IRA is not only that the money is going to be tax-free by the time you start pulling it throughout retirement, which could allow you to net more retirement income dollars. Like as an example, if someone takes out $100,000 from their 401k account that's a qualified account, and they're in a 30% tax bracket with all things being equal, they'd be able to walk away with $70,000. If let's say they were pulling out $90,000 from a tax-free account, such as a Roth IRA, and they were in a 30% tax bracket, they'd be able to walk away with $90,000. There was no money that was going to tax. 
So that's not only allow an individual to net more retirement income, net more income that they could pay for their, their retirement expenses, but then also has a trickle down effect on helping out with less tax on social security income, something known as provisional income, which could tax social security income up to 85%. So when monies are coming out and currently how it, how it stands is if individuals are taking money from their Roth IRA, it does not increase their provisional income. So therefore it could kind of have two, uh, two mechanisms that are working for an individual's favor, meaning that they could have more social security income that they could keep because less of that would go to taxes. And they could also net more retirement income because it's coming from a Roth IRA. So the conversion opportunities, whether it be from a 401k to a Roth IRA or traditional IRA to a Roth IRA, that has been very attractive in recent years because of individuals' fears that there's a large governmental deficit and individuals fear that the only way to pay for that deficit is to increase taxes. So this is a way on how somebody could lock in, you know, being uh, convert their monies into a Roth IRA from their qualified accounts. But you have to be careful in doing so because when you do the conversion, that's where it's going to show as it's going to increase your adjustable, uh, you know, your adjustable gross income and uh, it could be a, a sticky tax situation on the year that you do the conversion. So you might want to go and, and, and have flexible conversions where in that example of a $500,000 account, if somebody wanted to do a conversion, maybe they convert $100,000 each year for the next five years or $50,000 per year for the next 10 years so that it's only slowly increasing their taxation, their taxable income for that tax year. But eventually they'll have all their monies come from the qualified account to a you know, a tax-free account such as a Roth IRA. So, there, you know, that that's some just different attractive things, just different food for thought. But I hope that these first, you know, metrics on what is a withdrawal, what is a rollover, what is a conversion, how that could actually help out a situation. So that all sounds great, but what are the problems with this? Well, the first thing is when somebody tries to take a full withdrawal, that first problem is the taxation, the taxation on that withdrawal. So, meaning that, like I mentioned before, if somebody is currently in a 20% tax bracket, and they go and they are taking out a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand from their 401k account. That can now jolt them into the next tax bracket where they not only have to pay taxes on the monies that they're pulling out of the account, but then they have to pay higher taxes because if it went from a 20% tax bracket to a 30% tax bracket well, and they took out two hundred thousand dollars, well, that two hundred thousand that they took out is now being taxed at a 30% bracket as opposed to a 20% you know, bracket. So that's where just really simple math will show us that the more money you take out, the more it will increase your amount of taxable income, and that could actually double hurt you. Uh, also, if you're taking it out when, let's say, you, it's throughout retirement, that could also increase the amount of uh, taxation on your Social Security income. So you just want to be very calculated with this approach. Another common mistake is individuals just doing the rollover, but not understanding what to do with it. And not actually having a, uh, not creating a strategy or multiple strategies that will help an individual have a proper retirement plan. So it's not a portfolio, it's a plan. We know with the 401k, this is typically like a growth plan because an individual was making contributions and they were relying on their rate of return to come back favorable to grow this bucket fatter and fatter and fatter. Well, one sort of strategy might be saying, taking these monies, rolling it over to an IRA, and going, getting set up with better funds, higher quality, lower cost funds. So that could be a growth related strategy. Or they could go and create different strategies, such as an income strategy, a safety strategy, and a growth strategy. So as an example, let's say that somebody is currently age 60. So we understand this is this individual's point A, and they want to retire at age 65. This is their point B. We're going to use the example that they have $500,000 sitting in their 401k account, and they're eligible to cash out their 401k. At age 65, after doing different budgeting analysis, and at any point in time when you're reviewing this video, if you have specific questions you want to speak with an advisor, call our 1-800 number, it's 1-800-566-1002, and just reference this video, we'll have a specialist speak with you. But in this example, person's age 60, wants to retire at age 65, after figuring out what their current expenses are right now, what their future expenses are going to be throughout retirement, we understand that they need $70,000 of cash flow by the time they're age 65 until date of death that they can never outlive. $70,000 and also have an increase in cost of living adjustment on there. With that, 
we know that there's an account of $500,000 that's sitting here. Maybe at age 65, this individual could collect $30,000 of Social Security income, and they're also provided with $30,000 of pension. Pensions are not as common as they once were. So majority of individuals are not offered pension plans, but just for this example, obviously Social Security income is a cash flow. Pension income is a cash flow. So this says that this individual has $60,000 of income coming to them, but the expenses, what we need to solve for is $70,000. So this individual could go take the $500,000 if they qualify for an in-service rollover or cashing it out and roll over these monies into specific IRA accounts. One, the first step is trying to make sure that we're closing up that income gap. This person's only given $60,000 of lifetime cash flow, but their need is $70,000. Maybe out of this $500,000, it's going to cost $150,000 to place into IRA number one. That will have a lifetime income mechanism attached to it that will get triggered in exactly five years. That mechanism will give this person $10,000 of cash flow. So it will be the combination of the IRA will produce lifetime income, the Social Security income will produce lifetime income, and the pension income will produce lifetime income, where that $70,000 will match up evenly. So we always want to make sure that the income, when somebody is no longer working, they're no longer producing that income through their job. Pretty self-explanatory. We need to make sure that their cash flow throughout retirement is greater than or equal to what the expense is. In this example, out of the 500000 it costs 150000 The smallest amount of dollars only is only as much as necessary to accomplish his income need. Now it brings us to step two. This individual has about $70,000 of expenses. Rule of thumb is an individual should have anywhere between 6 to 12 months of what their expenses are into some sort of emergency, some sort of oh my gosh type moment was to occur. So maybe out of this, you know, out of the 150000 IRA number one that was used for an income strategy, we use $50,000 in IRA number two to be structured as a safety strategy. So this could be an IRA with a money market account. Say, hey, if anything happens from now throughout retirement or from now until I'm going to hit that retirement age and then also going forward, I just want to make sure I always have $50,000 at my fingertips that I can touch. So as that's happening, we know that out of the original $500,000, we created two IRA accounts, one for $150,000, one for $50,000, and now those are working perfectly that accomplish the income accomplished step one, the safety accomplished step two, and now we have over three hundred thousand. We have three hundred thousand remaining that could be created in a growth strategy. And that three hundred thousand, they could say, okay, well, let me go into low cost index funds or no load mutual funds or something that could be diversified properly that we know is going to ebb and flow, but could put them on a much better growth trajectory than keeping those dollars in the four hundred one k account. And what I mean by that is, and let me clear off the screen because it's starting to look a little sloppy. If we think of the four hundred one k like a bucket and an individual is no longer making contributions into that 401k plan, well, then they would have to rely solely on the rate of return side. What determines the rate of return being positive or negative is based on the investment options. So like I mentioned before, there's only about 15 to 25, typically about 15 to 25 investment options in a 401k account. So that's the eggs in the basket. There's only so much juice that you could squeeze when you're limited on your options, on your investment options. So if somebody in that example had 300000 remaining, and they said, okay, I really want to place my money with investments. I want to you know, make sure that this is growing as high as possible because I've already created my proper income strategy. I already created my proper safety strategy. So now I could basically afford for this 300000 to ebb and flow with the market. Well, what makes more sense? Using 15 to 25 options or over 3,000, 4,000 different options that you could choose when you have a customized and investment-related IRA. Or maybe out of this 300000 you take 100000 and you have that set up into some sort of fixed-related IRA, while the other 200000 is very aggressive, so that now you're diversifying it out better to say that, okay, at least a portion is going to be preserved and that's going to have you know, consistent growth, while the other monies could have high growth or it could also have high losses, but you're not, you're not forking over the full 500000 to have this, this sort of uh, you know, risk-related mechanism. We're making sure that we're splicing it out properly. So that's how somebody creates a strategy. It's not creating a plan. It's not creating a portfolio. It is creating a plan. And that's the most important thing when somebody's looking to cash out their 401k, even if it's in the form of withdrawal, how do you make sure that you have a proper plan set up? There could be ways on how somebody has a laddering strategy 
from ages 60 to 65, and then they're leveraging mechanisms from age 65 to 70, and then leveraging other mechanisms from age 70 going forward, how do you make sure that your that that strategy is being created successfully? And this is really it, it's based on your situation, it's based on your goals, based on what you're trying, what you see as your ideal retirement, and then it's now taking those steps back and saying, okay, how can we create these strategies? How can we create these perfect puzzle pieces that are working together that will put together your perfect map, your perfect roadmap from now until your retirement date, from your retirement date until date of death for both you, your spouse, if that means leaving a legacy, whatever that case is, you know, that's how somebody's able to have the confidence throughout retirement. And a nice four-tiered system where somebody could conceptually think of this, do you have a proper distribution plan or income plan in place for your retirement? Do you want one? Is that important to you? Do you have a proper growth strategy or investment-related strategy from now throughout retirement? Do you want one? Is that important to you? Do you want to make sure that whatever you don't use up for income and growth, that that can now be leveraged as a optimized estate or legacy planning strategy, saying, okay, I want to make sure that this $100,000 is being left to my kids, being left to my family members in case I pass away. Well, is there a way that you could place mechanisms on that 100000 in that example to make sure that it's growing on some sort of fixed guaranteed basis so that whenever, God forbid, that person passes away, the, the beneficiaries receive much larger than the amount that somebody was just trying to leave on the sideline. So there's different mechanisms that somebody could do. And then, most importantly, the taxation, what I covered briefly on the Roth IRA conversions, does it make sense to use just 401k and qualified monies? Or is that going to be a disaster throughout retirement because tax rates could be potentially higher? Uh, you know, the provisional income calculations could be higher, meaning more Social Security income could be taxed. So, you know, what exactly do you already have strategies for this, you know, for your, your specific situation? If you don't, then this is where we help out individuals. We have a trademark process known as a retirement diet plan. This video just went over a sliver of what we do. Um, we do have certain qualification mechanisms, meaning that obviously we don't, we don't take on every client. We want to make sure that there's going to be a fit mentally, that there's a fit financially. And it's something that, you know, we could show you mathematically and scientifically how to accomplish your needs on your distribution plan, your investment plan, your estate plan, and your tax plan, and make sure that we're focusing on the areas that are most important to you so that you have that ultimate, you know, retirement success. If you found value in this video, you want to speak to a specialist, feel free to give her a 1-800 number a call. It's 1-800-566-1002. And set up a calendar appointment that works most conveniently with your schedule. You could also visit our website, retiresharp.com or fossefinancial.com, and you'll see a calendar link that will pop up on the right-hand side where you can go and schedule a more uh, you know, uh, specific time that works best for your schedule. Um, you know, In closing, I hope that you did enjoy this video. Please leave questions, comments. Uh, if you want to have access to the most updated videos, I want to try to put out a couple of videos every week. Make sure to hit the, that subscribe button and uh, you'll be sure to try to post these videos out there and try to help further your financial education. But it was an absolute pleasure and I uh, look forward to speaking to you guys and uh, feel free to reach out whenever you need. Thank you so much.